Molly Ringwell joins me live in Studio Q. Hello. Hello. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. What, what is it like for you after years of doing press as an actor and then as a writer to now be talking about being a singer? It's, it's funny. I, I never thought that I would do it really professionally and you know even when I started uh, with this band I really thought that it was just going to be something that I did you know in a in a small little club you know I didn't know that I was going to record an album I certainly did not know that I was going to be touring that album uh, but it's it's nice it's nice to to do something that uh, that I love so much well this um, so this album features your take on jazz classics there's um, classic songs i'll take romance the very thought of you sooner mm -hmm. or later how did you go about picking the catalog for this record and picking the songs are these songs you've always wanted to sing did somebody work with you on this how does this <laughs> how did you go about this i think it was mostly i mean it was a little bit of a commando mission my my pianist uh peter smith who also arranges all of the music uh, you know, we we kind of just decided, hey, let's do an album. You know, let's let's do it, and and we kind of put it together, and we did it independently. Concord Jazz ended up releasing the album later, but it was just kind of okay. What songs are really good? What what songs do, do we all sound good as a band? Because I I know a lot of songs, but then these ones were just the ones that kind of just everything gelled as as a group um so i think that's really how we and then we we recorded 13 songs and then there's only 10 on the album it's sort of an orthodoxy to think that singing cover tunes is going to be easier than going out there with original stuff uh, at the same time when you're talking about classic songs like this mm -hmm. um how how did you approach this how do you approach a classic song and n negotiate the path between showing deference to the song, but mm -hmm. also finding your own interpretation of it. You know, I really just try not to think about it that much, <laughs> 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 to be honest. I mean, you know, there, there's a lot of things that I do that I think, you know, I, I do think a lot, you know, for instance, writing is something that, that requires a lot more uh, thought. And to me, music is just something that I do. I, I it's, it's hard to explain, but it's just I don't really think you that much. You weren't concerned. You weren't freaked out about taking on a classic and thinking, oh, how, you know, will my interpretation stand up to what's been done in the past, or how? Can I, I mean, I, I I guess you could you could go there, but I you you certainly can't stay there. You know, I think that if if you if I do that, I would never I would never leave my house. I mean, I would never do anything creative at all. I think that there hmm. there is a time for the critic, uh, but when when you're creating, it, it's something that it's a part of your brain that you have to be able to turn off. You are able to shut that up. I think so. I mean, I think actually years of acting really help with that because that's something that you have to do as an actor. I mean, you do your work ahead of time, but then when you're in front of an audience or when you're in front of a camera, you have to turn off that that critic in you or else you, you just literally cannot do it. Or people will see that somehow in your performance. Yeah, yeah. A then self consciousness. You, exactly. Self consciousness. And I think, you know, really good actors um, are are, you know, masters at that. You just you kind of shut that part of your brain off and you go somewhere else. And I think it's one of the reasons why children are such natural actors, you know, and then sort of lose it um, as they become adults because right. that that you know, it really is a skill to be able to turn that that side of your brain off. You you start to build the baggage of a lifetime of criticism that you take, no matter what you do in life, right? Yeah. Well, and one hopes. I mean, one hopes that, that the older you get, you 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 hope that you develop some sort of uh, lucidity. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, but but that's really when training comes in to be able to to turn that side off. So, have you? What about us when you're not on the stage or when you're not recording the song? I mean, how have has has criticism ever affected you? Do, is it something that you pay attention to? Do you do you look at reviews? I do not. Yeah. I do not look at reviews. I, I stopped reading reviews when I was 19 years old. <laughs> wow. I read a, a review, you know, that that hurt my feelings and um, and really sort of felt unfair to what me. What movie was that for? It yeah. was actually for a play. Uh, when you were a teenager. When I was 19 years old, yeah. And and I just thought, I, you know, I don't need this. This is not helping me do what I do. And so I just stopped. And then once once you stop reading reviews, it's really incredibly liberating. I mean, not to say that I don't respect the opinions of people in my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I ask, you know, when I write something, I, I ask people to be brutally honest. I, I, I feel like I take direction. I take notes. Uh, I just don't read reviews. 
There's some interesting backstories behind some of these songs on this record. For example, mm -hmm. um, Sooner or Later, which you definitely mm -hmm. put your, your stamp on, is Sondheim's song. Uh, that's, that's a song that Madonna sang mm -hmm. in the Dick Tracy movie. Mm -hmm. And is it true that you were up for that part or you wanted to play that part? Well, my agent was contacted about my availability for that part. And, uh, and then I just spoke to, to Warren Beatty recently and, and we talked about it and he said, oh, no, 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 you wouldn't have been for that part. You would have been for the other part. And I said, no, I, it was that part. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so uh, so I don't know. But I do know that my agent was was actually um, contacted, and I was really disappointed that he went with uh, – with Madonna, but you know, <laughs> this is your come up and stuff. Yes, you're, you're now singing the song. <laughs> yeah, and there's another song in the album too, uh, which is uh, a song from from Oliver. And I was up for the part of Oliver when I was um, eight eight years old, seven or eight years old, and it was really it came down between me and this. Well, he was a boy, uh, and they gave it to the boy, and I was so heartbroken because I thought I could really sing that song. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty much every, every song that I you know for a part that I didn't get. I, I put on my album. By the way, you've <laughs> said that Warren Beatty was was has been a supporter of you mm -hmm. musically yes. over the years. How yes. did he know about your your singing side? Well, he's a he's actually a really um, amazing pianist uh, and uh, a big jazz fan, and you know has known me and my family since I was fourteen. And I used to sing with my dad's jazz band, uh, and he would come here my my dad's band so so he knows you as a singer yeah, yeah. you i mean you said that music was your first love before mm -hmm. acting like mm -hmm. this is going to come as a shock to people not just because people know you as an actor but mm -hmm. an actor who started young i mean we yeah. first started seeing you as a teenager in yeah. those john hughes movies so do you remember when you first fell in love with music and jazz specifically i i it was it was really too i mean it it was pre-verbal you know i've been singing since since I could talk. So I really don't remember a time when I wasn't singing. It was just, it was just constant. So when your dad would bring you up on stage when you're three, mm -hmm. okay, that, what, <laughs> what were you actually doing when you were three on stage? I was, I was singing, <laughs> give me a pig foot and a bottle of beer and, uh, you're a good old wagon daddy, but you done broke down. Uh, somebody just the other day, you know, I did this album when I was six that, you know, all the musicians did it for free. They kind of, you know, as an investment in me, which mm. was amazing. Um, but I, as far as I knew, there were no recordings of me when I was actually three years old. And then the other day I was in Wisconsin and somebody gave me a recording and they said, you're three years old in this. And I said, no, it, it can't, it's not possible. And then I listened to it and I was actually three years old. It was amazing. It's, I mean, to have somebody just give you a recording of yourself. What, who is this person? He, How do they have a recording was, of you when you're three? He was at this club that I, that I sang in with my dad, Capone's, in Sacramento. And I was singing A Good Man is Hard to Find. <laughs> at three. <laughs> at three. <laughs> wow. And, and, and your dad was a, a pianist, right? He is, yes. He is a pianist, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so what, who were the singers that first inspired you? I mean, what was it? Do you remember having a role model? Do you remember thinking this is who I want to be? Bessie Smith. That's who I wanted to be at age seven. Um, well, I mean, all of the songs that I sang when I was really little, I, it was either Bessie Smith or Helen Kane, uh, who was a, the the voice of the original Betty Boop. Mm. So I sang a lot of, you know, Get Out, Get Under the Moon, and He's So Unusual, and all these sort of, you know, old-timey songs. Uh, and then, and then as I got older, I, I got more into you know Ella Fitzgerald and the Great American Songbook, Blossom Deary. And okay, so the obvious question is Molly, Molly Ringwald. <laughs> <laughs> got to say it all together. Yeah, it feels better to say the whole thing. <laughs> uh, I mean, you clearly have a great love and knowledge of jazz. Mm -hmm. Why? What happened in terms of why, why would you not pursue a career in music? How did you end up in in acting then? Well, I I was acting. At the same time, I started, you know, really at the, almost the same age, a little bit later. Uh, and then, you know, I did my first movie when I was 13, which was Tempest with uh, John Cassavetes and Jenna Rollins. And uh, I just, I don't know, I think I, I, I became completely enamored with, with that. And I decided that, that that's what I wanted to do. And at the time, I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't be taken seriously as an actor if I was a singer. Mm. And also the kind of music that I really like to sing, even though I like all different kinds of music. In fact, I wish that the National were here today. That would be amazing. Uh, but uh, 
you know, at the time, I really thought I had to focus on one thing, um, and I chose acting. Um, and then at a certain point, you did it almost seem uncool that, when you're, uh, you know, I mean, I think I think of the soundtrack of the Breakfast Club or, or Pretty in Pink. Did it mm-hmm. almost seem uncool that you were into jazz standards? Was that <laughs> part of the, the the issue for you? You know, kind of a little bit. I I mean. You know, but I also think that as a teenager, I, I sort of wanted it, it was a part of, you know, individuating from my parents because it was so my dad's music. Right. Uh, and so I wanted to have my own thing. You know, I still listened to jazz music. In fact, um, you know, John and I used to listen to like Dave Brubeck. John Hughes um, loved Dave Brubeck. Mm. And so, you know, we would listen to that. But, you know, I I just uh I, I don't know. I, I don't regret not um, pursuing music. I think I, I, I feel like everything sort of happens the way that it's supposed to at the time that it's supposed to. You, I, I mentioned that you express yourself in various ways creatively, writing, acting, singing. What is that about in you? Where does the drive come from to put yourself out there in so many different ways? You know, they're just things that I, I've always done. You know, I, I just didn't do them um, publicly, I guess. You know, I I just focused on on the acting, but I you know I continued to write all of these years. I just never knew that I was going to publish. You know, I continued singing. I just never knew that I was going to release an album. So, I I think it's I've always been somebody who does more than one thing. You know, people like to pigeonhole uh, mm-hmm. people, especially celebrity stars that they know. Uh, you, do you, is that, is that a concern for you when you come out as a writer? You, uh, you know that. Do you go, oh, this is going to be tough because people are going to say, Molly Ringwald, the actor, is mm-hmm. a writer or mm-hmm. and now a singer. Mm-hmm. Tell, how do you deal with that? You know, I, I don't really have control over what people think, so I don't really spend a lot of time thinking about that. Mm. I, I really have to stay focused on what I do. And, you know, I have to say that people have, I've, I've had incredible um, experiences with, with people in the literary world and in the jazz world, uh, you know, incredibly welcoming. So, um, you know, I think ultimately the the work speaks for itself, and it's either good or it's not. It's you know, but it's entirely subjective. You know, I there are certain books that I love that other people hate. Right. So, you know, I think it's I I just stay focused on on me, and I I think that's the sanest thing to do. Acting, writing, jazz music. Um, before I let you go, I want to play a bit of that sooner or later. Do you? Uh, where are you at on your journey? Does it feel like is music where, what you want to pursue now, or no? I, I mean, I yes, I I would like to pursue it, but you know, I I feel like people are are really like what you said about pigeonholing. It, you know, it's hard for people to wrap their heads around somebody who does more than one thing, right. you know. And uh, I I consider myself first and foremost an actress. Uh, you know, I'm I am working on uh, my second novel, and I'd like to continue to do music, and I don't see why I can't do all three. Let's, um, let's, and, th- let's go ahead. Sorry. And and I'm a mom, so I do that too. Right, you've got a lot. You got a lot. And I'd like on. to learn how to speak Italian. And how's that coming along? <laughs> um, I'm a little behind on that. <laughs> um, uh, and and what's the um, what is the best part of this music gig for you? I think just doing it i mean you know the, I, let's say let's put it this way the hardest part is is traveling and, and being away from my family but the best part is is being with the musicians and just singing and and listening to them i mean that that that's the part for me that's energizing and and i also feel like i'm you know growing and and learning and getting better all the time and uh that you know that's still a, it's really important to me nice to talk to you again Thank you. Thanks for coming in here. Congrats on the record. Thanks so much.